hi all in this video we will be discussing about pain coming to the definition according to in international association for the study of pain in 1979 they had defined pain as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such damage so later they had revised the pain definition into like pain is defined as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with or resembling that associated with actual or potential tissue damage coming to the classification of pain so pain is classified according to different classification first classification is based on the duration so based on duration it has been classified into acute pain subacute pain and chronic pain and based on intensity classified into mild pain moderate pain and severe pain and based on location it has been classified into headache backache stomach pain referred pain and joint pain based on etiology it has been classified into nociceptive pain that is a somatic pain and visceral pain and neuropathic pain so that is the peripheral and central type of pain so coming to the first classification that is classification based on the duration it has been classified into acute pain subacute pain and chronic pain so acute pain it is the type of pain that lasts for relatively short period of time usually less than 7 days subacute is a classification that is like the pain will be maximum for a 3 weeks duration and chronic pain it, it has doesn't have any apparent cause and it lasts more than 12 weeks or 3 months so next classification is classification based on intensity so this has been classified based on the visual analog scale it has been classified into three types so that is mild type mild pain moderate pain and severe pain so mild pain it will be around 1 to 3 in your visual analog scale and moderate type it will be 4 to 6 in the visual analog scale and severe means it will be 6 to 10 10 will be the intolerable or worst pain possible so zero means no pain and 10 means worst possible pain in the visual analog scale so next classification is based on the location so the pain has been classified into headache backache stomach pain referred pain or joint pain the so next classification is based on the etiology so based on the etiology pain has been classified into nociceptive pain and neuropathic pain so nociceptive pain is again classified into somatic pain and the visceral pain so somatic pain means that is the pain that arises from the musculoskeletal system usually it will be a deadly or throbbing or a sore type of pain and usually it will be localized and next sub type is the visceral pain so visceral pain arises from the visceral organs such as the gastrointestinal tract or a pancreas etc and this will be in a gnawing excusing and cramping type of pain and this can be diffuse and poorly localized and often referred to the distant sites so this is about the nociceptive pain and next type is the neuropathic pain so neuropathic pain usually occurs as a result of injury to the central or peripheral nerve systems so the type of pain that will be present in the neuropathic pain will be shooting burning electric like sensation tingling and stabbing type of pains so it can follow a nerve path or it can be poorly diffuse for example the example for neuropathic pain will be your uh, phantom limb pain complex regional pain syndrome so everything will be coming under neuropathic type of pain so coming to the theories of pain so there are n number of theories the most, but the most common or important theories are your uh, intensity theory specificity theory strong theory pattern theory central summation theory fourth theory sensory interaction theory 
gate control theory bps bio psycho social model of pain so coming to the first theory that is intensive theory this was put forward by erb in 1874 and this theory defines pain not as a unique sensory experience rather as an emotion that occurs when a stimulus is stronger than usual so this theory is based on the aristotle concept that pain resulted from excessive stimulation of sense of touch it was concluded that there must be some form, uh, form of summation that occurs from the subthreshold stimuli to become unbearably painful so here in this intensity theory you can able to see that your they had described the herb had described that your touch as well as pain is having a single pathway and there is a single pathway for your touch and pain less intensity will be producing the touch sensation and increased intensity will be producing the pain sensation this is one of the oldest theories for your pain which was put forward by herb in 1874 next theory is the second theory that is known as specificity theory it has been put forward by von free in 1895 so it is also one of the earlier model of pain theory it argued that the body has a separate sensory system for perceiving pain just as it does for hearing and vision so intensity or intensity theory has said that there is only one pathway for your both touch and pain sensation but in specificity theory von free had put forward that there are two different pathways for each your individual touch sensation as well as your pain sensation this theory considers pain as an independent sensation with specialized periphery sensory receptors that is your nociceptors which respond to damage and send signals to pathways along your nerve fibers in the nervous system to target centers in the brain it proposes that the pain is transmitted from inde independent nerve endings in the skin to a specific part of the brain called pain center so he even put forward that there is a specific center in the brain that is known as pain center so that will be transmitting the transforming the pain sensation so next theory is the strong theory it was put forward by the strong in 1895 he proposed that the pain was an experience based on both the noxious stimulus and the psychic reaction or a displeasure provoked by the sensation strong concluded that pain is the sensation the first sensation was the experience of heat and then came the sensation of pain next theory is known as pattern theory so this was put forward by john paul naff in 1929 and he postulated a quantitative theory of feeling in 1929 and this theory states that any somatostatic sensation occurred by a specific and particular pattern of neural firing and that spatial and temporal profile of firing of the peripheral nerves encoded the stimulus type and intensity the pattern theory of pain suggests that the nerves involved in detecting the pain also detects other sensations according to this theory there are no specific nerve fibers or endings used just for the sensation of pain so instead different sensations such as cold pain heat and touch are detected by the same nerves which then sends specific signal patterns to the brain the brain interprets the patterns which includes both your sensation and its intensity and the specific sensation will be felt by the particular person so this is all about the pattern theory which was put forward by john paul naff in 1929 next theory is the central summation theory this was put forward by livingstone in 1943 and he proposed that intense stimulation resulting from the nerve and tissue damage activate fibers that project the internuclear neuron pools within the spinal cord creating abnormal reverberating circuits with self activating neurons prolonged abnormal activity bombarded cells in the spinal cord and information is projected to the brain for pain perception 
So next theory is the fourth theory. So that is put forward by Hardy, Wolf, and Gödel in the 1940s. And they state that the pain was composed of two components: the perception of pain and the reaction one has towards it. The reaction was described as a complex physio-psychological process involving the cognition, that is, the past experience, culture. and various psychological factors which influences the pain perceptions next theory is sensory interaction theory which was put forward by nuden box in 1959 it describes that two systems involve transmission of pain that is the fast and the slow systems the later presumed to contact somatic and visceral effects whereas the former was considered to inhibit the transmission of the small fibers so he he put forward the two fiber systems that is the fast fiber and the slow fiber system next theory that is a the important theory which can be asked for your even for your essay as well as so that is known as the gate control theory so that is put forward by Ronald Melsek and Patrick Wall in 1965 and Melsek has proposed a theory of pain that has stimulated considerable interest and debate and has certainly been a vast improvement on the early theories of pain according to his theory pain stimulation is carried by small slow fibers that enters the dorsal horn of the spinal cord the, uh, the other cells transmit the impulses from the spinal cord up to the brain so these fibers are known as t cells or transmission cells the t cells or transmission cells can be located in a specific area of the spinal cord which is known as substantia gelatinosa these fibers have an impact on the smaller fibers that carry the pain stimulation in some cases they can inhibit the communication of stimulation while in other cases they can allow the stimulation to be communicated into the central nervous system for example the large fibers can prohibit the impulses from the small fibers from ever communicating within the brain in this way the large fibers create a hypothetical gate that can open or close the system to the pain stimulation according to the gate theory the gate can sometimes be overwhelmed by the large number of small activated fibers in other words the greater the level of pain stimulation the less adequate the gate in blocking the communication of the information so this is all about the pain gate theory so in this you can see there are two fibers fast fibers and the slow fibers fast fibers is your a beta fibers and slow fibers is your a delta and c fibers if you are uh, targeting or if you are stimulating the a beta that is your faster fiber there will be a hypothetical gate occurring at the substantia gelatinosa and the pain will be blocked at the spinal cord level itself and it will be blocked the spinal cord level itself and so thereby the pain sensation will not be carried to the brain higher centers over your brain so this is how the pain has been modulated or this is how your uh, all the electrotherapy modalities will be working based on the pain gate theory so there are three factors which influences the opening and closing the, of the gate so first factor is your the amount of activity in the pain fibers activity in this fi fibers tends to open the gate the stronger the nauseous stimulation the more active the pain fibers second factor is the amount of activity in the peripheral fibers that is those fibers that carry information about harmless stimuli or mild irritation such as touching rubbing or lightly scratching the skin so there are large diameter fibers which is known as a beta fibers activity in the a beta fibers tends to close the gate inhibiting the perception of pain when noxious stimulation exists so this would explain why gently massaging or applying the heat to sore muscles decreases the pain so if you are gently massaging or if you are applying heat to the sore muscles 
your A beta fibers will be getting activated and the A beta fibers activity will be helpful for uh, closing the gate within the spinal cord level itself thereby preventing the uh, impulses of transmission of pain impulses towards your higher centers. So next factor, third factor is your messages that descend from the brain. So neurons in the brain system and the cortex have different pathway to the spinal cord and in the impulses they send can open or close the gate. The benefits of this theory is that it provides a physiological basis for the complex phenomena of pain. It does this by investigating the complex structure of the nervous system which is comprised of the following two major divisions that is your central nervous system and your peripheral nervous system. So next one, next is the last and last but not the least model of your pain. So that is the biopsychosocial model of pain. So this was put forward by George L. Angel in 1977. And this model of pain states that pain is not simply a neurophysiological phenomena, but it also involves the social and psychological factors. So it says that factors like culture, family, nociceptive stimuli and environment influences the pain perception and this ultimately affects a person's emotions, behaviors and cognition. So this is all about the pain and the theories of pain. Thank you for watching this video. Please do share this video to your physio friends and fraternity. Thank you.